You curious what's going on in the real estate market for May 2023? I'm going to tell you right now. Hey, I'm Adam D with the Local Connect and KW Realty. And the most common question I get is, how's the market? In this video, I'm going to show you exactly what's been going on for the past month. If you've been watching my videos, you've been hearing the same thing over and over again, and it hasn't changed this month either. We're still seeing a lot of multiple offer situations, very competitive, low inventory, buyers are struggling to find a property for sale. However, not all hope is lost. We've still found success with a lot of buyers in these multiple offer situations. They haven't been going quite as far above asking price, but still very competitive. And I wanna show you some of the numbers so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So we're first taking a look at April, 2023, last month, uh, compared to 2022 in April. And so you continue to hear me talk about inventory. And here's what's really interesting in our overall market, Atlantic and Cape May counties, there's about 30% less new listings to come onto the market. Now there have been fewer properties to go under contract and fewer properties to sell compared to last year. However, when you really look at the numbers, there was a significant amount of properties to go under contract and sell many more than came onto the market. So this is what continues to perpetuate this inventory issue we're having. So you can tell there was almost three times as many properties to go under contract as there was to come onto the market. That's actually depleting inventory and continuing to make this more of a seller's market. And because of these numbers, I do not see this transitioning back to a buyer's market anytime soon. Here's another way to look at the inventory for Cape May County. And you can see where we're at right now is we're just under three months of inventory. And you go back to 2019, we had almost seven months of inventory. So remember, five to six months, really six months is about a neutral market. So still very much a seller's market at under three months of inventory. You'll see here, Atlantic County has even lower inventory. They finished up April at about 2.3 months of inventory. Again, very much seller's market and far below where we were in 2019. That was still a competitive market, but we have far fewer or far less inventory now. Here's an overlook for the entire US. Uh, data from NAR, buyer's market is six plus months of inventory. We were still very low across the country on inventory. This is the problem you hear us continue to talk about every single month and it hasn't alleviated. And that's why we're seeing the multiple offers and the bidding wars because there's just not enough properties on the market right now to match the demand from buyers. I had a few people ask me about the headlines in April about foreclosures increasing. And while I suppose that's statistically correct, it really is factually wrong. You, you cannot look at it and have the belief that there's an increase in foreclosures when you see how minute the actual increase is. Let's take a look. Those articles and headlines all use this data where you can see that from 2020, the number of foreclosure filings has about doubled but it's extremely low still compared to, you know, even a normal market, let alone a crash in 2008 or nine. Personally here in the market, I am not seeing any foreclosures whatsoever at the short points. I've come across one or two offshore, very, very rare. Uh, yeah, statistically they doubled, but again, I think those headlines are really misleading and not something I'd read too far into. One of the reasons there's very little concern with a market crash or people going through foreclosure is because there's so much equity in people's homes right now. You know, right now we have a large portion of people that have either they own the house free and clear, so 100% equity, or they have more than 50% equity in their house. And that equates to almost 70% of homeowners in the United States right now. I would bet that's even more true in our area here. So people have a lot of equity in their house. They're not in default. If they needed to pay their bills, they could easily sell their house because of the fact that they have so much equity. But what's more common is they're actually cashing out and going and buying something else or another investment and they're utilizing and leveraging that equity. Now, another problem that is perpetuating our inventory problem is we have a lot of people who don't want to sell their home because they have a very low interest rate on their current home and they don't want to sell it in order to get another mortgage on different home at a much higher rate. So you can see the percentages here. Look at the majority of people here, about 80% of people have a mortgage rate that's less than 5%. 
And if they went out into the market right now, they'd have a rate that's at least six to seven percent, possibly more, depending on what they're purchasing. So, you know, this again is not what the Fed's planned on. Um, we got a lot of people that don't want to sell because they don't want to get out of their mortgage. And I totally understand that. Another current event I wanted to touch on is you've probably seen the news articles, social media about recent policy changes that have caused people with higher credit scores to pay more than people with lower credit scores as far as an interest rate on their mortgage. Well, it's not quite true. Yes, what happened is with some changes that actually were announced earlier in the year, but now they're becoming um, effective or mortgage companies are actually starting to implement them before uh, Fannie Mae and the purchasers or insurers of these mortgages um, are, are implementing this. But what's actually happening is they raised what's called loan level pricing adjustments, the fees that buyers pay to the mortgage lender, they raised them for people with higher interest rates and they did not raise them for people with lower interest rates as much. But don't confuse the headlines. If you have a higher credit score, you will still get a better interest rate than somebody with a low credit score. I'll send you this article if you're interested, but you know, uh, here's what you need to read here. The fact of the matter is that loan level pricing adjustments are indeed changing in a way that improves costs for those with lower credit scores and increase costs for those with higher credit scores, in many cases. But people are confusing the change with the actual cost, right? So it's gotten a little bit closer together, the difference between a, a low credit score and a high credit score borrower, but it does not mean that a high credit score buyer is paying more than a low credit score buyer. And you know, if you really wanna get technical, you can look into these loan level pricing adjustments to see what the actual fees look like. A lot easier if you just ask your mortgage lender. Lastly, if you've been hearing about these loan level price adjustments, they're not just for credit scores. These are fees that most mortgage lenders, not all, but most of the mortgage lenders in the US that are insuring their loans with a Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, um, they are going to charge fees, right? And you hear the headlines about credit scores, but what we see more common is there's a higher fee for condos. There's a higher fee for second homes if you're not putting more money down. So talk to your mortgage lender about this, talk to your realtor, see if there's ways to work around this fee. But if you're putting the minimum amount down or even 20% down, a lot of times you are gonna pay these additional fees either in points or an increased interest rate. So now that you've seen the numbers, that's exactly what's been going on in the last month. And I hope that we've been able to clarify some of the headlines that you've seen in the media as well. Overall, it's still a really great market, whether you're a buyer or seller you can still see a lot of success in today's market. I wouldn't be scared at this moment of what the future brings. Part of my job is to research the market every day and stay on top of exactly what's happening. If you'd like more clarity on what's happening in your neck of the woods, please let me know, I'll be happy to help. If you like what you're seeing in these videos, please make sure to subscribe. That way you're alerted to the next video and it really helps us with the content we're producing here. I'm Adam D with Keller Williams and I'll see you on the next one.